Um, I follow very much on with the teachings that Ramesh put forward and um, and that is that what we're really looking for, whether we realize it or not, is happiness for the human being in this life. And that happiness is not at all the happiness that humanity has imagined it to be. Humanity has, um, has been seeking happiness in circumstance, in outcomes, thinking that it's available in the future when one day, you know, everyone acts perfectly and when circumstance is perfect. And in fact, this teaching I put forward says no, which is the same as Ramesh put forward. No, the happiness is available, but it's available in a very particular form. And that form is unbroken peace of mind. And unbroken peace of mind in practical terms is the absence of suffering. And suffering in practical terms arises in the form of guilt and blame and pride, worry and expectation. And so, the happiness that's available is the absence of those forms of suffering and all of those forms of suffering rest on the ingrained very deeply ingrained sense of self that believes that i am the doer and that my happiness is to be found in outcomes and as that um, belief of personal doership and attachment to outcomes gets whittled down what we find is that the suffering that stems from there um, becomes less and less, less intense, less regular, until eventually we're left with the, the absence of suffering. And so the whole teaching um, is really a, an exposition, an expanding on that which is relevant to a shift from suffering to peace of mind. Um, well, to me, non-duality is a... Um, a genre, let's say, um, a particular path, a, a spiritual path, uh, I guess a subset of jnana yoga as opposed to bhakti yoga or karma yoga. Um, and Advaita Vedanta, well, Advaita itself is Sanskrit for non duality. Um, so Advaita and non-duality are essentially the same thing, but just words in different languages. Um, Advaita Vedanta is a very specific methodology um, that one has to have respect for if we go into it. it. It's so detailed in terms of all of the different stages that it addresses, stages of a seeker. Um, it's often much more pre prescriptive um, then resonates with a lot of seekers. And so Advaita Vedanta is usually something that um, is, used to be delivered in, to, to, in a monastery type form where there's a monk that is dedicated to a very specified unfolding over many, many years. Um, so I see Advaita Vedanta as a, a particular methodology of non-dual teachings. Yes, that's my experience. So I'll make it clear that um, liberation, when I say liberation suffering or even enlightenment is the end of suffering, that is a concept. It is the concept within this teaching framework. And so according to that concept of liberation, from my experience and according to Ramesh from his experience. And if I read in between the lines of many um, spiritual masters and I read their teachings with this um, perspective in mind, according to myself, to Ramesh and to many other masters, liberation is available in a particular lifetime. It's the experience of uh, many um, masters throughout history. Um, it's complex. Uh, even those that are immersed in a process that focuses on reincarnation as the teaching methodology sometimes fail to realize that the, the end of the karmic wheel of birth and rebirth is the realization that there really is no one and never has been anyone to be reborn. 
Um, and so from a enlightened, liberated point of view, if we did, um, if we did subscribe to a notion of reincarnation, it would be with a very specific tone to it, just like the notion of karma. Um, karma can be included in 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 what how I see life. However, it's not a personal um, implication. It's more about an impersonal unfolding of life where there is a cause and a consequence. And so karma is essentially cause and consequence. And so the story of life um, is created according to certain cosmic laws, um, basically a framework in which the, the story of life has to fit. And so the laws of karma, the laws of reincarnation can well be part of the cosmic laws, which means that if the, the author of life, the creator of life is writing the story, the story has to follow the impersonal um, the impersonal laws, which means if the if the author writes into the plot that the character steals something, they then have to write in the consequence that is in line with the laws of karma, which means there has to be a consequence. Now, the laws of karma can be complicated. We don't understand them. So the consequence might actually not be the consequence that you or I expect it to be because of the interconnectedness of the whole of life. Um, and so I think we can say that something akin to reincarnation may be part of the story of life. Um, something akin to karma may be part of the story of life. But it's as real or unreal as life as a whole.